Welcome back to Bayou Time. I'm Jason DeGate, again, filling in for Jimmy DeGate tonight on Thursday. 879-1231 uh, if you'd like to get involved. It's uh, just before 6.30 if you're watching us live and you would like to tune in and also uh, participate in the conversation. Give us a call at the numbers below, 879-1231. We've been talking uh, a little bit on you know, a few different topics, if you will, government spending and, and that sort, and also uh, you know the new project going on in uh, you know it's a project that's been in the work for, works for some time in Lafouche Parish to build up some beach from Kamenata Pass basically to Fouchon or if you will Bell Pass uh, and as I understand it they're breaking it up into sections and uh, you know they're starting from Kamenata Pass as I understand it because it's kind of beat up a little bit if you will and there's some some holes in the beach there that they need to uh, get filled, especially uh, near Elmer's Island, and then they'll work their way towards Fouchon. So, uh, but but it's good to see that they're moving in that area and they're reinvesting in the area, and a lot of people are really pleased with that. Let's go down uh, the phone lines now. Hello, thank you for holding. Hey, Jason. Hi. It's uh, Ricky Sheremy with oh. the Beachfront District. Oh, thank you for calling. We were just talking about you, man. <laughs> I know. I, that's why I called in. I okay. Was couple of points uh yeah we the the presentation that we made last night to our board was just the state share of that project so that six miles is what the states are going to pay for okay the six the federal miles government is going to come in and build the next eight and a half miles it's 14 and a half miles of beach that's going to be created okay when the project was designed and it's going to start at bell pass so it's going to start from Bell Pass and work okay. towards the east. So it's going the other way than what I just said. The engineer last night said that, that we cannot go by what we've seen in the past with the erosion and all that because the coarse grain sand would not move with a storm surge or wind like like our fine pottery sand that's, that's native to that area. So it's going to be a little bit different. What we've seen in the past with with the erosion for storms, it won't be as, as uh, you know, as bad with this type of sand as the type of sand we have now. Where is the sand coming from? Ship Shoals. Ship Shoals. They're going to they're gonna dig it up at Ship Shoals, put it in barges, bring it to Fushon, and then pump it onto the beach. Okay. And, and Ricky, just so everybody knows uh, who, who you are, again, you know, for our... I'm uh, chairman of the Solid Food Beachfront Development District. All right. But explain me a little bit about the project. When the project was designed, it was mostly the two landowners in that area and the core and all. So there was no recreational component to this project. Okay. Uh, what, what we want to do is get the core to consider a recreational component to the project. Then we want to urge the core to acquire the property from the landowners rather than try to work out an easement with them. Okay. We found that, you know, government always takes the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. If the public doesn't show an interest, they could work out a deal with that landowner, like let us use your property to build a project and then y'all going to get the, the newly created land and, uh, you know, uh, it, it's a lot easier than trying to go in there fight the landowner in court to find out who owns the new property. And I specifically asked last night if the portion of this project that's going to be created in open water, would that belong to the landowner or to the state? And the guy answered me that typically it would belong to the state. Mm -hmm. However, if they work out that easement and trade that property off with the landowner, then you're going to have two landowners in that area that's going to control who goes on that beach and when? Maybe never. Maybe never. Maybe only the people that are willing to pay an exorbitant price to get on there. And as you know, as a group, we've negotiated with those two landowners for three years, and our beach is still closed. We haven't been able to work anything out with them. So I'm asking HTV, I'm asking Martin, you guys to get involved, the people in Terrebonne to get involved because if they build this project, the only people that's going to benefit is the people from Jefferson with Elmer's Island. Okay. If 
We build it because completely. Elmer's Island is 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 public, just so everybody right. knows. Right. Correct. 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 So, right. So anyhow, we uh, we feel that you know Terrebonne Parish is spending a couple of million dollars in promoting the tourism, and uh, you know we we think it'd be a nice addition to Terrebonne to where people could come down, stay in home. Eat in the restaurants, go down maybe to Cocodri and go fishing or do large, and then jump in the car and drive down to the beach and, and spend a day on the beach. And we can make this, a, you know, this area of Carbon, Lafourche, and Jefferson a tourist destination rather than a place where somebody will come visit one time and say, well, they ain't enough going on there. I want to go to Destin next year. You know? I see. Tremendous impact to the economy, but without the people, letting them know what we want we're gonna lose well i see what you're saying so you're looking at it from a recreation standpoint i mean we all know that the benefits that it'll provide you know to, to help protect the interior wetlands if you will the, the, the marsh and things uh if it's built but you would like to take it a step further and 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 your group would like to take it a step further to make sure that people can enjoy it recreationally we have a we have a master plan. We have a, a we've developed a master plan for the development of it, and it's not going to be any condos or casinos or hotels, anything like that. It's going to be fishing piers, boardwalks, pavilions to get out of the sun, bathroom facilities, a good uh, aggregate road on the backside of the beach to access the beach, and uh, you know, Jason, we have we have a lot of people down here that can't afford to take a trip out of state. You know, mm -hmm. we need some here that a man, a grandpa can load his kids in the car, bring them down to Pushaw Beach, show them how to crab, throw a fishing line out, catch a fish and all that. It's cheap recreation for the locals and it could be, you know, a tremendous asset to the tourism dollars that are spent in this parish because the, pro the plan we have, you know, it's it's not just for people going down there and doing that. It's going to be for ecotourism. You know, we're going to we're going to protect the archaeological sites. We're going to protect the birding areas where the rookeries are, and everything else. All of our plans were developed with the environment in mind. So it's not like we're trying to go in and rape and pillage and 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 put people out there that right. you know that's going to destroy the beach. We have. Uh, tremendous cooperation in the parish you know we have the the sheriff has provided inmate labor to keep the beach clean okay. the harbor police has provided uh harbor patrol to uh patrol the beach and enforce our rules the district attorney cam morvard has prosecuted everybody we've cited uh the fire district down here has trained some of their employees in uh, sea rescue, and and they've provided uh, ATV vehicles for that for that patrol. And uh, you know we have we've had people donate dumpsters and the money for portalette. So everybody is involved in Lafourche, and I'd like to get some of the people in Carbon involved. Cause I go out there and I interview the people. You'd be surprised how many people from Carbon go down to Fushaw Beach and fish and crab and everything oh yeah you know yeah so now, we, now let, we, let me just we, explain we, let, let's just explain to people uh exactly again where we're talking about if if you taking the road from fushon to grand isle basically if you're on that that two-lane highway it's everything that's on the right side of that highway correct we take fushon road highway 3090 go down south head south on 3090 go through the port and you come to the old Leeville Bridge. The old Leeville Bridge was moved from Leeville to that spot. You cross it, and you drive down the parish of the right away all the way to the water's edge. Okay. Well, right. from that point, you can go west to Belfast, the rocks of Belfast, and east to Elmas Island, which is Caminata Pass. Right. So it would be that whole stretch of beach from the rocks of Belfast to Caminata Pass that would be created between the state project and the federal project. Now what's important that was said last night, that that $65 million, the state was told, you either spend it and do this, or we send in that money somewhere else. Okay. 
So they're mandated to start by early early uh, next year. All They've right. got to start this project and spend that money. I would just hate to see that money be sent to Florida or I agree with California you. or something like that. We need, to, we need to snatch it up while we can. Look, Ricky, I thank you for calling. Help, uh, man. Just thank you for the time, and I really need your help. On thank this. you very much, Mr. Chairman. All right. All right. All right, so hopefully that provides a little more in-depth insight uh, to everyone who wanted to call about that uh, particular issue. Let's see, we have a couple uh, more minutes to take a few more phone calls. We have people on the line, 879-1231, and then we're going to bring on uh, uh, some guests to talk about TETA. We're going to have Board Chairman Chairman Don Hingle, as well as uh, past Chairman Mike Voisin in Corinth. He's also a current uh, TETA Board Commissioner. They're going to be joining us to talk about Terrebonne Economic Development Authority uh, coming up in a few minutes, but we have time to take a couple more phone calls, and we'll do so right now. Hello, welcome to Bayou Town. Hello, Mr. Jason. Yeah, you're on the air. How are we doing today? Doing fine. That's pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Good. Look, uh, I was born and raised in, in Dulac and Grand Cayo. All right. And I'm 45 years old today. My name is Peanut. Okay. When I was 14, 15 years old, we used to go outside Grand, uh, the ship channel. They had a, they had a sand island where they had cars and trucks and four-wheelers that would ride and they had camps out there. Okay. What's, what, why, what they going to do for us, you know what I'm saying, for a storm protection surge? Well, I, I, I understand I mean, we live in Chabon Paris. I hear talk about Fouchon and Grand Isle. You know what I'm saying? But what about us? Did y'all go ride out there in a the boat and see how the marsh is being made up because we don't got no more island that's been washed away? You put a six to eight foot island where the island was, and just think about the storm protection we gonna have in Terrebonne Paris and the edge of Lafourche Paris. Well, I understand exactly what you're saying. It, it all needs to be beefed up, but you gotta start somewhere. And let's face it, they're gonna start near Fouchon because that's where all the money is coming in uh, to the economy because of the port there. Uh, but I'm with you. Uh, there's no question well, we need to do well, some. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. You can be. Go ahead. I don't see why they stopped the government, the governor, from doing what he was doing from Chandelier Island. He, they should have let him come straight on across to you know come on west and pass and hook that back up to the west end of this uh, Grand Cod Bayou, and then our marshland is gonna fill back up mm -hmm. with sediment. The island's going to protect the surge from hitting Dulac, Homer, Chauvin, Montague, By the Lodge, and all that hey, all that slush coming in that's going to fill in the marshland. Yeah. Then the marshland going to build back up. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to have protection again. If not, if they don't start doing something today, instead of waiting until next year or two years from now, they, when the storm going to come, Homer gonna be underneath the water. Pretty well, sure your house would be one of the first to go, and mm -hmm. as well as a lot of other people right there in Summerfield. They have no protection. Y'all got no protection. We got no protection. Mm -hmm. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. We've been fighting that battle for a long time. Well, uh, it, I think it's time to stop fighting and start doing what you're supposed to do. You well, know, it, it, the, the engineers you, out there, hey, look, the you preach it, you preach it to the choir. They should be doing what they're doing instead of running their mind and trying to figure this and that out. They should be out there building up a, a uh, island. I'm, I'm right there with you, Peanut. But the problem is, you got to have money to do those sorts of things, and we only have so much in the state. And the federal government will only give us so much. So that's what the we have to. Government that's why you have protect, to keep fighting. He's only going to protect the island of Grand Island, Fouchon, because he knows he can make money from that. If we do this island the same, I remember they used to have electrical poles yeah. going straight to the island over here outside of Dulac and Grand Cayo in Cocodri. What's hear the you. matter with us? You I know what you. I'm saying? That's, hey, that's just the because lack they can of make respect. a dollar over that Grand Island, Fouchon, don't mean they got to forget us. No, I, I hear you. We're on the same page. You, you, you're preaching to the choir. But I do think it will serve as some benefit to us if they beef up uh, things to the east of us because we always fl flood from east to west. When that's storm for real. Comes. But if the storm passes a little bit on the well, other side of us, say for instance, that's right. Uh, in between Grand Cayo and, and Morgan City, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know what's going to happen? I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm with you. <laughs> I, I, I wish I had the power and the Look control that to give us money. A couple money. of years ago, passed 200 miles out in the Gulf and went towards Texas. Yep. We got eight foot of water underneath our house down here in Grand Cayo. That's right. That's right. Thank you for the call. Why, why, why they care do something about that? You know, all they care about is where they can make money from. Well, you know what? Well, we've been making money from that for generations back. That's right. But and the government been getting taxes off of every dollar that's been made. So therefore, why don't he look at this situation that what we facing and our grandkids, our kids, and our grandkids assume to see that their heritage is washed away? Because the government only want to allow such a public beach like Grand Isle or Fouchon to be open. What happened to our beach, man? And I your, hey, your generation passed you, your grandfathers and, and great-grandfathers spent many a times and many a days out there on that island where I'm talking about with them camps. Hey, I spend, I spend many, a, many a days and many a weekends on those islands growing up All out right. of coca drink. Why can't, can't y'all hey, Why can't y'all fight for that? Well, every, we are fighting for that. Every, look, I can't look. tell. Only Grand Island Pouchon is being brought up. Well, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, man. Don't don't make this a me and you versus each other thing. I'm on your side, okay? I, well, I, think I know you're you on my I side, think, but I think, uh, you, I think you're I getting twisted here. <laughs> the Corps of Engineers, the Corps of Engineers, hey, I understand you're on my side. You know what I'm saying? Because you live down here. Yeah. But if, you, hey, if, if, if everybody don't start opening their eyes, Homer's going to, hey, you know where Homer's going to wind up being? In wrestling. All right. Look, I appreciate the call. We appreciate your passion. And All right. I, I, I'm right there with you. Uh, I understand it's the same battle we've been fighting, and we're going to continue to fight, but we need to have the money. And that's why the local levy district has done what it's done. You say you want to see them do something and not just wait? Well, they made that decision. They said, you know, we're going to go ahead and we're going to build Marganza to the Gulf to protect everybody from storm surges. And hopefully on the back end we can get reimbursed from Congress, but we're not going to sit here and watch people's homes get flooded over and over and over without doing anything. So they are doing things in this area. Uh, it's, you know, but that doesn't mean when somebody else, a neighboring parish, has something going on that, that we can't bring that to light and show everybody what's going on because I think that is good for the overall area. But I understand your frustration just like everybody else. Uh, and for one, all you got to do is get in a boat. Doesn't matter what size boat you have. You get in my 16-foot Joe boat and go into Marsh and fish your favorite spot this year. Next year, it's probably not going to be there. And uh, it's, it's frustrating to see because it's, it comes more and more and more. We do need to take a, actually, we have another phone call to take. Uh, but they are handing me a news. Uh, let's see. NFL owners unanimously vote for tentative agreement to end the lockout. So that's uh, hot off the press from the AP. Uh, some of you may have just saw that come across the newswire. NFL owners unanimously vote to tentative uh, agreement to end the lockout. Stan Gravois will have more on that issue with sports. Let's take one or two more phone calls. Hello, welcome to Bayou Town. Yes, sir. I would like a little information on the beach. Is that going to be like a beach for people to swim or, or it's just... Well, that's what Mr. Sheremy had called in this to talk about. Again, it's not going to happen overnight. Right. Uh, you know, on the public side, it will on Elmer's Island. Right. But as he was explaining, there are some areas of the beach that there are landowners there. And unless they can work out some agreements, it's going to be, you know, it, it's privately owned. So uh, we're going to have to see what happens. They're working. They're trying to work through that issue right now. But how would you get there? Through uh, from Grand Isle? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. No, not necessarily. He's saying they're trying to make an access route. Right. Okay. Okay, and second, the second thing I yeah. got, uh, instead of the, the government trying to, to cut the uh, Social Security checks, how about they put a, a heavy tax on the oil companies for raising the gas price? All right. There you go. That'd be the best thing to do. Yep. I think a lot of people would agree with you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You have a good All night. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. Let's see. One more caller. Hello. Welcome to Bayou Time. Hey, Jason. Well, I already took you. Yeah, you did. Well, hang on one second. That fellow was talking about uh, Terrebonne Parish. Yeah. And I had said six, 14 miles. I was correct. Yeah. You had said six, six miles of beach. Well, no, it is six miles is what the state is doing. The, and it's the, 14 the, miles altogether. Well, but the eight, the, the other eight miles hadn't the been. The federal government. 
Right. Look, but it, look, I'm going to hang up on you and I'm going to explain it to you because we're not, we don't have a whole lot of time. The six miles is what the state is going to do. The other eight miles is what the federal government is supposed to come in and complete. We all know, all right, what happens when you talk about what the federal government is going to do. All you have to do is look at what's happening around here locally. Hopefully, they can secure that money for the other eight eight miles. That would be nice. But for right now, I think they have the money for six. With that, we do need to take a break because we have several people waiting to come on. We have many guests tonight on Bayou Time. The phone lines are all lit up. I apologize for not being able to take all of your phone calls. I look forward to speaking with you uh, more next week. And for our next, you know, I'm sure Martin will be here Monday and we'll take more phone calls on Monday. With that, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll turn the discussion over to the Terrebonne Economic Development Authority.